What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Justin Ford Podcast, where I'll be releasing life-changing principles and valuable information focused on all things faith, finance, family, fitness, real estate, and so much more. Let's go! What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Justin Ford Unleashed podcast. Super excited to be with you here again today. Hopefully, you've been doing great since the last episode. Guys, if you're loving the show, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here on YouTube, or you can subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. And if you're really loving the show, go ahead and share it. And if you're really, really loving the show, uh, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. We really appreciate all the love and the support. Got a great episode in store for you today. But before we get to that, this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they lived next door. The founders and team members have more than 150 years of combined experience helping clients all over the country choose the best loan program to help you accomplish your goals. Nextdoor Lending is currently licensed in over 25 states and has a team of professionals of over 100 loan officers specializing in helping you get the best rate and terms. Whether you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your next home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888-885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Guys, this Sunday is what we call Easter Sunday. And, you know, I wanted to do this episode because, you know, a lot of times I think uh, when, when, when we have specific holidays like Christmas and Easter, we really forget what the true meaning of these holidays really are. And, you know, from the, from the Christian faith and even from the, you know, the, the, the Jewish faith, you know, what this, this week upcoming, you know, Friday and Sunday really mean are, are, are something that is really, you know, a part of the foundations of, of both faiths, right? And, you know, for Friday, this Friday is what we call Good Friday, but it's also considered, you know, Passover. And, you know, Passover is is really, you know, in the Bible where, you know, basically the the God or the death angel, you know, passed over, you know, the, the homes of of the Jewish people uh, when, uh, you know, when basically during this specific time in the Bible where uh, in, in Egypt there was a, a basically curse on the land and the death angel passed over and, um, and, you know, unfortunately people died, you know, during this time, but the, the Israelites were spared because they had put in blood on their doorpost. And, and so it's been a, 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 a monumental, you know, time that uh, Jewish, you know, Jewish people celebrate and even Christians celebrate because, you know, I think a lot of times people think, you know, Christians don't acknowledge or, or celebrate the Jewish feasts and holidays, but uh, that didn't go away, you know, when, when Jesus Christ came. It, it's actually a part of, of, of what, you know, not all Christians, but some Christians actually look back and see the importance of. And then you have uh, Easter Sunday, right? And so if you don't know the story, you know, Jesus, you know, came, you know, to the earth. And I've talked about this before and, and, and was, was the Christ, the Messiah. And he basically died on the cross on on what we call Good Friday or, or Passover Friday. And, you know, I'm not going to go into a whole, you know, Bible study on it, but I really want to talk about, you know, what the true meaning of this, this week and weekend means. And, you know, even if you're not a believer or a follower of Jesus, it doesn't change the importance of, of what took place, you know, 2000 and, uh, you know, 23 years ago when, when Jesus died on the cross, because whether you believe or not, he died on the cross for, for your sins and he had you in mind, you know, and, and, and that's so powerful to think that, you know, 2023 years ago when, when Jesus died on the cross, you know, he was thinking about you and he was thinking about me. And, you know, if you really want to get a good idea of what this, this uh, weekend really represents, go, go watch the Passion of the Christ movie by Mel Gibson. This movie came out, gosh, I think it was probably like 20 years ago. 
And the movie was so powerful because even if you're a, you know, even if you read the Bible and you, you know, you uh, are a Christian, you know, a lot of times when you read scripture, you read it, you know, maybe from, I don't even want to say like a, a fairy tale or a, a story uh, tale. Like, you know how like you create an imagination around something that you're reading, whether it's a book, the Bible or whatever, and you kind of like envision, you know, what that, what that might have been like. And I remember the first time when I saw The Passion of the Christ, when when I saw that movie, it it made everything real uh, to me. And it was it was very uh, it was a hard movie to watch, but it, it, it was so powerful uh, to be able to see what Good Friday or Passover and then Easter Sunday or what, you know, many Christians call Resurrection Day, you know, celebrate. And it's, it's hard to say if, if those days, just like Christmas, are the exact days. Uh, but what we do is we, you know, have these dates uh, to acknowledge and celebrate. And it's interesting, you know, even how, you know, these, uh, these holidays even came about. Uh, but it's interesting what they've become today. Like, you know, the world or consumerism makes Easter all about a bunny and eggs and, you know, chocolates and Easter baskets and all this stuff. And I grew up, you know, uh, celebrating Easter that way. But when I became a Christian and really understood the meaning, it's so much more than just a bunny and a basket of candy, right? You know, the, and, and, and what, what what's really interesting is how the world has tried to distract what these holidays actually are with something that's totally that it's not. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to, you know, throw people under the bus and how they, you know, celebrate or, or, or how they, you know, what they do for Easter. I'm just here to share the, the, the true meaning of what it really means, whether you believe it or not. And, you know, Easter was actually a celebration of the spring equinox for the pagans. Like Easter's is actually a pagan holiday Pagans live their lives in strong accordances uh, na- with nature's rhythms and patterns, and they they created this this pagan holiday around a Greek god known as Estar, and uh, Estar, which she was a uh, a pagan god, and they they worshipped her or a goddess, I would say. And they worshiped her and, and basically, you know, if you really look up the meaning of, of, of what, uh, you know, what it means, it, it might surprise you, especially if you are a, a, a Christian, right? And a lot of times we just celebrate things or we follow things because they, uh, it's just what everybody does, right? And, and so when I really began to learn and study this, it really challenged me because a lot of times we don't even realize what we're, what we're celebrating or what we're partaking in. And, and everybody has their, their own convictions of, of what they follow and, and, and all of that. But, you know, when you really start to learn the meaning of stuff, whether you believe as a Christian or not, it, it really makes you, it really makes you, you think, because, you know, even, even the, the eggs, that are associated with Easter represent, um, you know, Estar was like a, a sex goddess, and the the eggs were basically like a, a like a fertility sacrifice, you know, type thing in in Greek uh, astrology. Um, she was the fertility sex goddess, and when you get really deep into to learning this and studying this, which I'm not going to go. Uh, too deep into, it really makes you question and think why, you know, we have kids celebrating, you know, these type of things. And we don't even really think about it because again, we just think it's normal. And, and really what is the true meaning and why has, has culture and why has society really tried to hide the real meaning of, of what Easter really is supposed to be. And, and it's, uh, you know, when, when you think about what Jesus, you know, did on the cross, right? He, he laid his life down on the cross. He died a brutal death. And what's interesting is even for people, let's say, who don't believe, like, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, 
you, you don't have to believe in it, but even if you removed the Bible from the equation and even removed, let's say, what Christians believe, there's enough documentation in history, books, and, and manuscripts that document that, that Jesus Christ was a real person, that he really did get crucified, and three days later, you know, he rose again and, and was seen by over 500 people after his death uh, when he resurrected. And the reason why this, this weekend is so important to Christians is because there is so much significance, not only in Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins, but rising again, overcoming death in the grave so that we could have true eternal life. And a lot of times we don't think about eternal life. A lot of times we don't think that we're sinners. A lot of times we don't think that we need a savior um, because our culture and our society today, sin is just normal. The things that we see going on in the world today are just normal. And, and yet every one of us as human beings, especially those that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, all can, can attest to this, that at some point or another, we've all recognized an emptiness and, and, a, and, a, and something just kind of missing in life, whether it's um, you know trying to figure out the true meaning of life, whether knowing that there's just like this void on the inside, or whether just knowing that there's something missing and more to life. And we try to fill that void with all the different things that the world has to offer, right? We go and we do it through money and success and sex and drugs and alcohol and things just to be left still void. And when, when, when I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was a broken young man. I was 19 years old and had tried everything the world had to offer, and, and it almost took my life. It left me even more void. And that's the thing about sin is when you go after it and it temporarily satisfies you, you have to keep going back for more and more and more and more uh, just to be left completely, you know, still empty and void. And when Jesus Christ came to the earth, he came with one purpose and one purpose only. That was to lay his life down for you and for me right? We all sin and fall short of, of God's glory, right? If you've ever told a lie, you're a sinner. If you've ever looked at somebody with lust, you're a sinner. If you've ever had sex outside of marriage, you're a sinner, right? And I'm guilty of all of those things. So I'm not, I'm not throwing shade or judgment because I was that guy. And what, what Jesus knew is as human beings, we would always fall short. He knew that we would never live up to the mark or standard of perfection. Therefore, he had to come as a sacrifice, right? To lay his life down, die on the cross so that you and I could have an opportunity to be uh, made right with God and to have a relationship with God. And that had to come through Jesus Christ. And so if you studied the Jewish, you know, culture is they had to every year sacrifice animals in order for their sins to be forgiven. Well, Jesus came as the ultimate sacrifice so that today we don't have to sacrifice animals for our sins to be forgiven. We just have to accept what Jesus did on the cross so that we could be made right with him and our sins could be forgiven and that we could be in right standing with God so that we could go spend eternity with him. And so if today that's you, right, if you're if you're listening to this episode and you're you're feeling, you know, what I'm saying right now, and maybe you don't. Right. Maybe you do not have any desire to believe or you maybe you call it religion or whatever. You know, I, t I spoke about this a few episodes ago. And what I said was, is if heaven was really real and if Jesus really is real and, and God is real and the, and, and the life that you could have of being fulfilled and being blessed and, and having your sins forgiven and knowing that you could go to heaven, wouldn't you want that? Like who wouldn't want that? And if the opposite really is hell and condemnation and death and all of those things, and we knew that was real, who would really choose that voluntarily? Absolutely nobody. And so today, my question is, especially as we're entering into this week, right, we're going into Good Friday, where we're, we're Passover is taking place, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at what Easter really is, and that's that Jesus came back to life. He didn't die in the grave where you got other religions where they know where, you know, Buddha is, they know where Mohammed is, they know where a lot of these religious people are buried, right? But Jesus isn't buried in a tomb because he 
he, he came back to life and he overcame the tomb. He resurrected back to life so that you could have life, so that I could have life. And if today you're experiencing hardship, maybe you are stuck in sin, maybe you're going through hard times, maybe you're stuck in addiction, maybe you feel empty, maybe you feel depressed, maybe you feel discouraged, maybe you feel lonely, maybe you're like I was where you just know there's more to life than this and you're searching for answers and you're searching for meaning. This week and what took place 2,023 years ago, Jesus did it for you. He, he laid his life down. He was beaten. He was bruised. He was tortured and ultimately murdered so that you could have eternal life. You could have your sins forgiven. You could be made right with him. And so if that's you, I just want to invite you to the table because the Bible says that God has prepared a feast. He has prepared a table for those that would put their faith and trust in him. And not only does he want to heal you from your pain, not only does he want to heal you uh, and set you free from your addictions, and not only does he want to make that, that void filled, he wants you to experience his love and his grace and his joy and his, his, his contentment. He wants you to experience that here on earth, not just waiting to get to heaven, but he wants you to experience what Jesus said, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly. That's what John 10.10 10 says. And so if today you're feeling challenged, you need breakthrough, you need healing, you need deliverance, you need to be filled, and you're, just, you're looking for hope and purpose and meaning, I want to pray with you right now because that's what this weekend is all about. And so if, if, if today you want to know that your sins can be forgiven. You want to be healed. You want to be delivered. You want to be set free. And you want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to just, I just want you to pray this prayer with me. And I just want you to just say, God, I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me 2,023 years ago. I ask you to forgive my sins, come into my life, and be my Lord. Heal me, deliver me, and set me free from whatever's holding me back. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you know, the Bible says that the angels in heaven are literally rejoicing over you right now. And this week that we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate Good Friday, we celebrate the Passover, Easter. God did this for you and for me. Go watch the Passion of the Christ this week so that you can get a true understanding of what Jesus Christ did for you and did for me. Guys, that was it. I just wanted to share what the real true meaning of of Easter really is. And I hope and pray that you get to experience the true meaning of what this weekend is. And if you prayed that prayer, I would love to know about it. You can reach out to me. You can find me at the official Justin Ford. You can also email me, justin at justinfordunleashed.com. I would love to connect with you. I would love to pray with you. And if you have any questions about what it really means to have a relationship with Jesus, reach out to me. I'd be honored to spend some time with you and to talk to you more about it. Guys, this episode was brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they lived next door. Guys, this is my personal lender. I've worked with Nextdoor Lending for quite some time right now. I know their owners. I know their loan officers. I know the team. And this is the only team that I have decided to work with. They have over 600 five-star reviews. They have over 100 loan officers. They work in over 25 states, and they are absolutely amazing. From the customer service to their rates and their programs, guys, Nextdoor Lending is number one. And if you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your next home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today and tell them that Justin sent you. Call them now at 888-885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. 
Com. Guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode. I hope it spoke to you. I hope you're feeling the, the tug of the Holy Spirit right now because Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you and he came back from the grave so that you and I could have eternal life. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're loving the show, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Feel free to share it on your, uh, your social media. Again, you can follow me at the official Justin Ford. Two things I'll always leave you. Number one, it's not how you start. What matters is how you finish. And number two, with God, all things are possible. God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. We'll see you on the next one.